So I wanted to just take a minute to kind of recap. If you've been listening to these um, these lectures in order, I've been talking about the angle that the sun makes the sun makes with the horizon, and actually I talked about how most recently how if the the angle is is high and the greatest angle that the sun can make with the horizon is a 90 degree angle, then what happens is we have the least amount of what we call beam um, beam spreading. Excuse me. And that as the sun is relatively low on the horizon, then that shaft of light gets spread out, and we call that beam spreading. So basically, it's spread over more area, so everybody gets a little bit less, basically, energy, because it's spread over a larger area. And I also wanted to emphasize that this kind of angle, change in the angle between um, the between the, ang the change in the angle of that the sun makes with the horizon, this sort of change in angle um, occurs throughout the year. And because one of the things you might notice, and I had a slide on it earlier, is that in the in the middle of summer, at noon, the sun is relatively high on the horizon versus in the winter. Okay, and and so we have less beam spreading here than we do in the winter time. And the other thing I want to mention, we saw it um, when I showed you a, and I'm going to show it the same figure here in a minute, um, a globe of the Earth, is that at a given time, depending upon what latitude you're at, you get a different angle um, of the sun. So we have this thing called um, beam spreading that happens with angle. And we also have what we call beam depletion that also happens with angle. Um, and let's see, go ahead and leave that um, for just a minute. Notice what we have here is the Earth. And don't forget that the, our Earth, is its axis of rotation is tilted. Okay. Um, to emphasize that, here we have the 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 poles, kind of like an imaginary stick that the Earth spins once every 24 hours on, right? So this actually is winter time. The, the Earth, if, if I kind of imagine the sun right here, the Earth will orbit the sun, okay, and um, once every year, and actually that's the next slide coming up, um, we call that uh, 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 revolves, I was right, revolves, there's too many R's, revolves, the Earth revolves about the Sun once every year and it rotates on its axis once every 24 hours. Okay, but what I want to emphasize here again is that here, can you see this particular um, orientation of the tilted Earth to the Sun, that the folks that are getting, the folks at what latitude are getting the most direct light are the folks here in the southern hemisphere, specifically 23 and a half degrees latitude in the southern hemisphere. Okay, most direct sun rays. And like we talked about a little bit ago, that means that they have the least amount of beam spreading. Okay, go up to the equator and now notice that that angle is smaller. The angle is smaller. Um, they get a little bit of beam spreading up here at 30 degrees north latitude, they get even more spreading. And up here at 66 and a half degrees, okay, the angle that the, um, the, I should just say that the sun at noon is on the horizon. Is that weird or what? But it's true. When, and the, in the northern hemisphere, December 21st or so, if you're at that, um, the highest the sun ever gets is basically on the horizon, if you're at that line of latitude. So um, I, this is called, the, the next effect other than beam spreading is called beam depletion. And um, to kind of highlight what beam depletion is, notice, can you see the Earth and kind of see that fuzzy blue around it? Well, that fuzzy blue is the Earth's atmosphere. So what I want to emphasize here is if I call this T for thickness, T1, can you see where that's a certain thickness that the Earth's excuse me, that the sun's energy needs to pass through in order to get to the Earth. Well, let's look up here at the equator, and I'll call that T2 for thickness 2. Can you see where the thickness, because of the kind of the non-directness of the sun's rays, the thickness is greater? Compare that to T3. And I don't know if you can tell it here, but T3, that thickness is even greater. Compare that to these four folks up here at 66 and a half degrees latitude as the Earth spins on its axis. Um, at noon, the Earth, is, excuse me, at noon, the sun is on the horizon. Compare that to T4 
the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere that the sun's rays needs to pass through in order to get to the Earth. Okay, so to kind of summarize, you know, those thicknesses, we could mathematically, you know, use um, inequality symbols that the thickness one is um, less than the thickness two, which is less than the thickness three, which is definitely less than the thickness four. This is all to say that the Earth's atmosphere, and I guess I haven't mentioned it yet on this slide, but we're talking more about how when the sun sends us energies, of an assortment of energies, the Earth's stuff in the Earth's atmosphere um, um, scatters it, um, absorbs it, um, redirects it, basically depletes it. So um, this thicker T4, this thicker Earth's atmosphere, um, that's going to be the most depletion of the sun's um, energy. So depletion is an important um, aspect of why when the sun makes different angles um, with regard to the horizon, you know, why do we get less energy?